Now, part of the Inspire One is I want to make it unique. Um, and looking through loads of videos, loads of people's posts, one thing I've never noticed is a gold Inspire One. Completely gold. Uh, not completely gold. The materials that should be coloured, completely gold. Inside, outside, upside down, everywhere. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to spray it inside and outside. Now I've got this spray paint. It actually says it will spray glass. It will spray everything. If anybody wants to know what it is, I'll let them know. Oh wow, it's tight to get off. That's it. <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to spray it yet in here. Definitely not in here. Right. One thing it says first, preparation. Bit white spray, brush it around, get everything cleaned up. Now white spray is good because it cleans and it degreases all in one go, so it's useful for that, and that's probably why we tell you to do it. Okay, so that drying stuff off. Okay, that's best cut <clears throat> Big blotchy stuff I want to get rid of. I'm wiping over the overspray, you see, it's coming off. A good finish, it's important to get on. Okay, I'll leave that and that's it. Right, I think one of the most difficult parts of assembling an Inspire, apart from uh, knowing what goes where, is this um, front leg, motor leg and to the arm. Um, now I've just refed, because I've had to replace the whole arm, both arms, um, I've just refed a new harness through it because the signal cables weren't long enough to reach. They've been cut short for some reason. But um, anyway, new front leg, because the one broke. New motor, nice, all pollen, brand new. On this side, I've got the black, i.e., the one without the white dot. Now, easiest way to assemble it, you come in close, I'll show you how to do this, because um, it is quite tedious, and you've even got to make sure you get the right screws in the right place. Okay, starting off with. You've got to put this into here. Now making sure there we've got a nice suction pad. Because it's new, this comes with its own sticky pad in there, protector. Because the motor's new, it also comes with its own sticky pad. You only need one. Take one off. But make sure you have got one. Come with screws. Here we've got T16s. Them's the ones you want for fastening that into there. Four of them. And they're podges, it's in your little podge driver. And also, getting your fingers in there, almost impossible. Get a pair of tweezers. Okay, start off with 
The trim capacitor's got the back end there like that. Press them down. And bring it all back, start at this end. Pick up, now you don't need nut lock on these. That driver's going. Pick up one. Put it into place. Driver. And screw it down. Now they are, when it's are new, the threads will be, have to be cut into the plastic pretty much. So it's a little bit tighter than what the other ones are. And again, oh, pick up another one. Do that with all four screws. We can see where they need to go. Okay, that's that done. Next, you want to connect this light cable, it's for the LED at the front there. That one's connecting into its little socket there. Again, quite fiddly. So make sure the wire bits that you can see there, the plug, are downwards. And the plastic part is on the top. That's the releasing lug there. And it will go in. And that's that in there, nice and easily. Now, put it on to the aircraft. Now you can see, as I said, I just re-threaded this, so it's all still taped up. I use a tie wrap to get it through here. I use string to get it through the top part there. Not easy, you can't just push them through. It's not possible. Just being very careful with them. Okay. First connect leads. You can't get these leads wrong. Apart from the fact that they're different colours, One's a plug, one's a socket. Push it in. And that one, push it in. Right, and then that needs sealing over. Tape it together. Um, originally it comes with some black insulation type stuff. It's only to protect it, so anything will do, as long as it's insulation. and then bind them two together over the joint of where you've just plugged them in. The rest is already sorted. Then, this other communication cable goes into the other plug. The other socket rather, the other plug goes into the socket. And there it is, in there. Right, now you've got to, see that wants to go back up to this screw here. So all this cable has got to be pushed, got to be pushed back into there. Don't use anything pointy, you might damage the cables. Making sure your motor cables are free to come up to the top. So push it up there, it's out And watch for this signal cable. That needs to go down soon. Once we've got everything else out of the way, then we can get in there. Okay, that gives us space there. Again, a pair of tweezers. Look, it's a little hole right down inside there. You've got to take this and feed it down there. until it comes out the bottom there. And you just pull it out there. That's it, you've got that. Right, now, as I say, all these screws are gonna line up. So you screw them right up here. Right up there, I right, and right up there. And the motor comes out there, and then sits on like that. There you are it, done, sorted. Now then, you get in your pack. Four big screws, four little screws, uh, two little screws. The two little screws are at the back, the four are from the front. Now, one point to note, and that is whenever you get a nut and it's got blue on it like that, put nut lock on it, it shows it needs it. These definitely need nut lock. They shake like bubbly, and if they come out, you're going to be in trouble. Right, one thing I did 
meant to say, and that is it's very difficult to get these lined up. What I do, get another smaller one. Once you've got it lined up as best you can, open it in place, put it all the way in on one side and it'll hold it. You can get the other side in. Once you've got one in it gets easier. Take that out now. Just keep pressing it together as you're doing it. Do it steady. You don't want to be doing the heading on the screw. I like to use this one to just fit. Okay, next. Do the other side. One thing I find with T8s, they damage very easily. They don't last very long. Right, and the two small ones I'm going to go for next. Same again, bit of nut lock. And into the back. Okay, right, as you can see it's not um, set yet. Now the only other thing you do to this is the aerial needs connecting to an aerial. They're soldered on, there's the end, two cables, an inner and an outer. Come to that later and put the front cover on. We've got to do that with all four. Now, the next thing to do is aligning this. Now, that's many people, what their opinion is, no positive. Um, some people even saying it doesn't really matter as long as they're rougher. So, what my intention is, is to set them both level. Just simply, on the more housings, set them level. Set them off, like that. There, 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 there. Now, so on the body of the motor, I'll put a blade. Get down so I can see. Put a blade and just a line. I can see that one there's out. Now that's good. That one there's good. Huh. And without anything moving, I'll try without anything. Okay, now for the very important part of putting the aerial on. Now, obviously, without this, no communication with the drone at all. Um, place it on the front there. Simple. Connections are at the top. You'll see on this one it's nice and new. So they're untinned. They're just in the copper colour. So the first thing I want to do is tin them two points. It makes it quicker and easier for solving. Very gently. It, that's all it is. Now then, when looking at this cable, remember it is a coax. So you have got an inner and outer core. 
you do not want to heat the outer core up to a point where it melts the insulation between the two cores. Right, once you've got it like that, get it so that you can do the outer, uh, the inner one first, on to the point where you want it. outer one, if we just solder the edge there, it will pick up and attach to it like that. I'll just check that it's got it. Nope, didn't get it. Try again. It's a little bit of a gap. Because it's been soldered before. Not working as easy as Pressure on that. And there we go. That's got it. That's got it very nice. Okay, then you put the new front cover on. You should have got a new one. You might put the old front cover back on. Simply slip in the top, in the bottom, and you've got four screws that go on from the back. Again, with a new one, you'll get a pack of little tiny screws. On top of it like that, then it's easy to get stuff. Because you get very little screws, very awkward positions. There, and that's it. Do that with all four. Right, there it is now, ready. Just needs its old coat putting back on. So I'll just get on with that. GPS unit is back up in there, where it should be. Good.
Okay, and that is it. Back together. All we've left to do now is change the propellers for the upgraded version of the uh, quick release ones. Um, and that's all. Now I need to um, recalibrate the IMU, of course. Um, and set compass and everything else, just make sure everything is working. 25%. just updated the home point which means it's put itself back into GPS mode um, while it's going through calibrations, calibrations um, it goes into active mode there it is 100% calibrated so we can't do the compass in here close that but what I can do is just check the motors make sure everything sounds okay we've got no pictures with no camera but we've got a um, mapping system and there we go. Uh -huh. Sounds good. Sounds sweet. Okay, time to change the propellers, get the compass set, and then do a test flight. Now I'm changing to quick release propellers, um, I've done a video on it so we don't need to sit and watch that. Okay, now ready to put the propellers on. Right, so there it is, one and a half weeks after being what I thought totally written off everything smashed up um now i've got to be honest when i first saw it i didn't think it would ever fly again i've never done anything like this before not to this degree you've seen me with the mavericks little tiny things but this all the complexity of that well a nightmare terrifying um and i've watched many videos well not many there's only a few on there and even then and uh, none of my detail Nobody's got a full breakdown apart from I think one video I saw at high speed put together and taken down. Um, so nobody's got a full breakdown of it. So trying to find out how to put it all back together again, no way. No schematics to go with it. So I didn't have a clue I was going blind. Um, but I had no to lose. It was gone. It was either dismantle it and sell it on as parts or just throw it in the bin. It was that far gone, both arms gone, motor's gone, camera's gone, body shell's gone. You know, there was too many bits that were gone to be ordinarily re-salvageable. They had not to lose. And you've got the opportunity at that point of a wealth of experience ahead of you should you get somewhere. So what I would say, if you're in this situation and you've got a bit of an house about you, you're into doing stuff like this, give it a go. Don't just give up. Just take things steady. Don't get scared of the big picture. Look at the individual bits. I stripped it down, not knowing if it ever go back together again. I took a few photos of what I thought might help later, but most of them was of the camera because of the coil of the cable, of the ribbon. Of this, not many at all. Um, and surprisingly enough, I didn't use them. Uh, it is quite logical when you put them out together. So have a go, try it. If you need any tips, ask me, I might know. And <laughs> it seems a bit of an expert at it now because I've done one, took it apart, put it back together. I certainly won't think twice about doing it again. Very easy. Now I've done it. Key points to look out for, making sure you get these straight. Watch when you're connecting up the antenna aerials, cables, um, very tedious. Making sure you use nut lock where it's required. Silly little things which are quite obvious, but it works, it's back together, I'm pleased, I'm back in pocket again, I'm not down a drum, which is good. Um, the camera will come back, I've just got to wait for the manufacturers, I'm waiting for DJI to get me a little ribbon, which is very difficult, it seems to get, it's very small, not the main ribbon, a very little tiny one, very deep inside the camera. Most people don't even know it exists. If I can get on that, it'll go back together, it'll be back on, it'll be looking again. 
until then it can't. Right, enough jab, that's it done. You got any questions about it, just drop them in the bottom. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Otherwise, hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've learned something. I certainly have, a lot. And now I can go out and enjoy flying again. I've taken it up, I've tested it, it does work. But I've not taken it high because it's very windy and I'm in uh, a built up area. And I don't know, I'm not taking it out anyway yet. Um, but I will get it up high flying. I've tested it, everything's fine. There's no, there's no reason why it's not going to perform as good as it did. So that's it. Right, thanks again for watching. See you again next time. Bye for now.